Okay, this is this video is book review of The Emperor of All Maladies by Siddhartha Mukherjee. And so this is a best-selling book, the best-selling book I think ever written on uh, cancer that I'm aware of. Um, and the author is a very smart guy. I think he was a Rhodes Scholar. He's an oncologist at Harvard. Um, did his fellowship, I think, at Harvard as well. Uh, I enjoyed the book. Um, I liked it enough that I went and read another one of his books um, all about DNA called The Gene. Um, and he did some interesting things. I thought the beginning was quite good where he talked about the history of surgery for treatment of cancer. And he talked about how certain theories of cancer will guide treatment. <clears throat> the centripetal theory, the idea cancer starts in one spot and spreads outward like in a circle in a radial form, led to more and more extensive surgeries. And that's the whole history, for example, of Halstead, the surgeon Halstead's radical mastectomies. And they keep making the mastectomy more and more extensive. We got to get the cancer. We got to get the cancer. If we take more tissue, maybe we'll be more likely to get the cancer. But they didn't study if that was actually beneficial. And they were even doing a so-called ultra-radical mastectomy, you know, disfiguring the patient. Um, and it wasn't until later when they actually studied the results, they realized, gee, <laughs> we're better off just doing a lumpectomy, which is a very minor surgery compared to these ultra-radical mastectomies that they were doing, you know, removing the clavicle, all kinds of extensive stuff. We now know that cancer can spread relatively distant through the lymphatics and can spread through the blood, hematogenous spread. Um, and this book really emphasizes the most popular theory of cancer that is taught typically to medical students and residents, and that's called the SMT, the Somatic Mutation Theory. The idea that cancer is due to a series of mutations. There's an initial mutation that damages the cancer cell, I think in particular like a mitochondria, and then there could be additional so-called driver mutations that push the cell to becoming cancerous. By the way, I think the somatic mutation theory is essentially wrong. I think it's largely been refuted by the Genoma Atlas project, which showed that the mutations tend to be relatively random. Um, and I think Otto Warburg was correct by saying there's many secondary causes of cancer, but there's only one primary cause of cancer, ischemia, leading to mitochondrial injury and subsequent transformation of the cell to becoming like an anaerobic bacteria. When you go down that path, you can make sense out of almost everything in cancer biology and cancer theory and cancer treatment. Not everything, but almost everything. Uh, whereas when you go down the path of mutations, you kind of end up with, who knows, it's genetic, just give it as much chemo, radiation, surgery as possible and hope for the best, tell the patient to make a will. Um, it's much less optimistic, and it sort of disempowers the patient. There's nothing you could do. It's just a genetic mess, bad luck. Okay, no. There's a lot a patient can do to help themselves. Um, the book was a good historical summary of conventional cancer treatment. So it's very good on telling you the history of chemotherapy, the history of radiation therapy, and the history of surgical therapy. So all of that was good, and I do think the book is worth reading for those reasons. The author is clear at explaining things. He's a good storyteller. Um, he's an oncologist, so because of that, you know, not a surprise, he focuses on chemotherapy. And he tells the history of chemotherapy like it's this heroic story. His best metaphor was the idea of chemotherapy is like playing chicken with death. One races to the brink of death and then stops at the last moment and hopes that the cancer, the tumor will die, but the patient will survive. Um, Mukherjee is basically what I would call a top-of-the-line, high-end conformist. And by that I mean the way you make money and the way you get ahead and get promoted in the medical system is you promote the conventional approach and you praise a big company or a corporation and they'll give you money to keep promoting them. And that's actually how uh, one gets ahead in the modern university system and medical system. However, most conventional medical theories are wrong. I mean, the reason why, you know, about 80% of disease is called chronic disease is because they never can cure it. You know, the, the ignorant public thinks, oh, modern medicine, medicine is so scientific, you know, all these miracle cures. Where are the cures? There's no cure for diabetes. There's no cure for hypertension. Those are the most important diseases that kill almost everybody, okay? There's no cure with, you know, traditional conventional methods, you can easily cure most of those patients with low-fat, low-sodium vegan diet. Okay, so anyways, what I'm basically saying is this guy Mukherjee is a very bright guy and he's a good storyteller. He's really articulate. He weaves in history and a little bit of Greek mythology as well and I like all that. 
But when push comes to shove, the bottom line is the book is like a commercial for chemotherapy, okay? And chemotherapy has done some good things. It's obviously one of the major standard uh, treatment methods of cancer. It's great for a lot of these liquid cancers, like a lot of these leukemias, childhood cancers, for testicular cancer, for some lymphomas, for some bone cancers, for choriocarcinoma. That's all good, okay? However, in the entire book, he only gave one paragraph about the potential association of poor diet with cancer or good diet for preventing cancer or improving sur survival in cancer. And that's irresponsible. Okay, he made no mention of Dean Ornish's uh, work on prostate cancer. The patients taking a vegetarian diet had much, much, much better outcomes, maintained or lowered their PSAs. No mention whatsoever of T. Colin Campbell uh, his book, The China Study, and the relationship between uh, animal protein and cancer, which is a major important thing to know. Uh, next is zero mention of Varberg effect and the metabolic theory of cancer. None about how the Genome Atlas uh, project has largely just proven the somatic mutation theory. Um, and so that's totally irresponsible. I mean, come on. This is major stuff. Um, no mention of how epidemiology shows dramatically lower cancers in countries where they eat a plant-based diet, a rice-based diet. Um, no mention of cancer survivors who had gone to a vegan diet like Chris Wark, Ruth Heydrich, Jenna Marie Wakeland, and there's a whole bunch of other ones. No mention of thousands of cancer survivors who changed the plant-based diets and the patients described by Kelly Turner in her book Radical Remissions. None of that. Again, basically, Mukherjee's book is a commercial saying the scientists who improve chemo are heroic, and it's about the only thing you can do for most cancers. It has its role. It certainly has an important role. Um, and, you know, the best story on chemo is, you know, Lance Armstrong's recovery from testicular cancer, and after that, he goes on to win the um, Tour de France. Rather incredible. All right. Um, there are some variants of breast cancer that benefit a lot from chemo. Some gastrointestinal stromal tumors, a gist. That's all great. But he doesn't even talk about the problems with chemo. It can suppress the immune system, and you might need that immune function. It might eradicate most of the tumor, even 99% of it, but not be able to get the cancer stem cells that lead to a recurrence, potentially more aggressive tumor. Um, sometimes a tumor will have very poor blood supply to the center of the tumor, such that the cancer chemo can't get to it because it's relatively hypoxic and avascular, like the center of an anaerobic abscess, anaerobic bacterial abscess, like cancer, you know, metabolic theory shows it can behave like an anaerobic bacteria. Um, it's limited by toxicity for the dose. You can't just keep going up on the dose or continuing the dose for prolonged amounts of time, weeks or months, because it's too toxic. Um, can, like I said, suppress the immune system. So while it does have a tremendously important role to play, it has a lot of limitations as well. And he really gives a one-sided approach to the story of cancer. And therefore, I think this book is worth reading. The audio CD was enjoyable. But I think it's misleading because it tries to imply that it's given a thorough, unbiased, well-rounded approach to understanding cancer as a disease and cancer chemotherapy. And it has not. This is a biased book that simply gives you the somatic mutation theory and implies that chemo is the only real treatment for most of it. And that is simply not true. Okay. So the book has value, but it's not the whole story. You know, a good starting point, but you want to go way beyond this with your studying if you're interested in understanding cancer.